My stop in Harrison, Arkansas, includes the story of Ruby Kate, founder of Three Wishes for Ruby's residents. She'll share more about her mission later in the show. But first, let's meet a few of her board members. Hi, I'm Oliver, and my job is reading and learning. Hi, I'm Sawyer, and my job is the secretary. Hi, I'm Leo. I'm the vice president, and I'm in charge of technology for Three Wishes. Hi, I'm Ellie, and I'm in charge of beauty and hair. Hi, I'm Ruby, and I'm in charge of mostly everything. There we go. Watermelon and a fork. Watermelon and a fork. Where are we going? <laughs> when visiting one of the nursing homes where her mother works, Ruby discovered that approximately 975,000 nursing home residents in the United States receive only $40 a month to spend on what some consider extras. She made it her mission to fill the gap and change lives throughout the country. What started out as a goal of raising $5,000 to help fulfill those wishes soon became a quarter of a million dollars through a mightily successful GoFundMe campaign. I don't know how we could have been so blessed to have somebody like Ruby come into our lives because how many 11 year olds do you know that would have went out and done what she's done? We are here today with one of my all time favorite guests. I met her during the 2019 tour, as you just saw, and all of her friends who were on the board. I know the board has been updated since then. We'll talk about it. But I wanted to have Ruby on to celebrate an award she has recently received. I'll have her mom on later in the show to talk about the plight of nursing homes through COVID-19 and their current status. But really just want to have Ruby here to show and share all of the hard work she's done since we've met and all of the good things to come. Thanks so much for being here, Ruby. Hi, thank you so much for having me. You're so grown up. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> yes, it's fun to see you again. Thanks for being here. I know you're super busy and I know your summer's off to a really exciting start. So we'll talk about that yes. in a minute. Uh, welcome to the show. So Ruby, Let's reiterate, I know we, they saw the, the clip from when we met in 2019 coming into the show, but let's reiterate for the audience your idea and just where you were, how old you were when you started really thinking about the plight of the patients that your mom saw every day. You used to go to work with your mom? Yes, I do. I was 11 in the clip and I'm now 13, turning 14 in October. I am so shocked. Just seeing me in a younger version is just so cute. It's seeing everyone else. It's adorable. But I'm still going to nursing homes. We have new clubs, new pop-up stations, new. We have so much new stuff, and it's just so exciting. Awesome. That's what we're going to talk about today. So let's go back a bit to when you first thought of the idea and what it was that, well, as I said, you, you came to understand through your mom's work that there are people who have very little and you had an idea to find out what their wishes were. And I remember your mom said, oh goodness, I thought they were gonna want things that we could, couldn't imagine providing because you had just started your GoFundMe. Who knew you were gonna raise so much money? But you found out that the things that they wanted were really quite simple. Mm -hmm. The things they wanted were just fruit. They wanted pillows, they needed new shoes. and. That $40 really couldn't care for stuff like that. And it was really hard to keep that $40 for the month because if you spent it all in the beginning of the month, you couldn't have it for the rest of the month. It was really hard to keep up for them. And so we started buying stuff for them and just, it was so simple. And that's what made it so fun and easy to do. And it made it so enjoyable. It, it's just awesome. When I remember your mom saying to me when we were visiting, uh, when I was uh, in, in your, uh, at one of the nursing homes where your mom worked, she'd said that some of the people just wanted a pair of pants that fit or a pillow that didn't hurt their neck. Things that we, many people often take for granted. But one of the biggest things is just these treats. I remember in the clip, you were giving watermelon out. People were so excited to have watermelon and candy bars and McDonald's, <laughs> things that they can't go out and buy on their own. Yes. The things, just seeing their reactions to watermelon just absolutely shocked me. It made me realize how I take stuff for granted and how I can help other people 
even outside of nursing homes. Exactly. And kindness breeds kindness. You've learned that as well. Let's also talk about how you, uh, you, you came up with the idea. You thought we can't fund these wishes ourselves, no matter how simple they are, they cost money. So you started a GoFundMe campaign. When you started it, what was your initial dollar goal? So I remember putting 2,500 on the kind of, when you set up a GoFundMe, the goal, and we almost immediately preached past that goal and hit 5,000. And then about two weeks later, we received an email from GoFundMe saying they kind of wanted to sponsor us and put us on their homepage. So when you click on the GoFundMe app, you see us. And after we did that, we reached almost $100,000. And it was just so shocking. Just waking up, going to school, thinking I have $5,000, and then coming back home from school and then having a little surprise of, you just raised $100,000 for people you love and doing something you care for. It was just so cool. And we've just grown and grown and grown. And have raised so much money and I'm so thankful. To date, how much have you raised? We have raised almost about four hundred thousand wow. dollars. Yeah. And this started in what year? This started in 2019. 2019. So about the time that I met you, because I had read your story somewhere. So in the same year that I met you, so you were just getting started. What people just saw in the clip is that you have a for every adult board member on your, in your organization, you have a, a kid, you guys, I was going to call you children, but you're almost, you know, you're, you're like teenagers now. So you have a, ch a kid representing that another, another piece of the organization, another part of the organization. So, because I think that kids see through a lens that adults do not see. And when, when in the clip when they were saying, I'm, I work in technology, that's something like helping um, the nursing home residents use FaceTime with their family or the beauty part. I thought, what does that mean? And she said, oh, I teach, I, I go in and do their makeup or I make their hair look nice, things like that. How has the board grown or changed since what we just saw in that introduction? I know probably people have been added or jobs have been changed. How has it changed since 2019? Where is it at now? So we've learned that it's really hard. When you have a really busy schedule, things get really hard and people have had to leave. It's very disappointing. People move, people get busy, but we've added people from an Arkansas area. So we have people from Jasper, we have people from Berryville, a lot of different places. And we have about nine places. These are kind of where we take kids from different communities that feel that they can upgrade their community in just the kindness era. And, and we've done that. So we have a lot of different kids from across Arkansas helping us and they're on our board now. And we still have some of the main board left. There's just some have been, some have left, some have been really busy, but we've updated and we're, we're, we're good where we are now. So I'm very happy about that. Yeah, and that happens. That happens in any organization. So that's very understandable. Um, let's take a break. When we come back, let's talk about uh, the awards you recently received. I'm not going to say anything about what it is right now. We'll talk about it when we come back. And we'll also share a bit about how you've grown. These pop-ups. I want to hear about these pop-ups. I know you've opened a community center. So let's take a break. We're talking with Ruby Kate of Three Wishes for Ruby Residents. I said it right. That's a mouthful. All right, we'll talk more with Ruby when we get back. And then later in the show, we'll talk with her mom, Amanda, as well. We're watching Ruby Kate here on Life of Lisa Bradshaw. Thanks for being here. We're here talking with Ruby Kate from Three Wishes for Ruby's Residence. Uh, as I said in the beginning of the show, I met her in 2019 during the Don't Wait Project Tour. We're here talking with her about the growth of the organization. When we met, Ruby, I think you'd raised about a quarter of a million dollars and you say you're up around 400,000 now. You've yep. added some pop-ups in a community center. Let's start with the community center. Where is it and what happens there and 
how is it benefiting your community? So our business center is located on Harrison Square. It is kind of on the corner, so it's a pretty good place. It has a lot of murals, has a lot of tables, big tables for connections where we can connect elders and the younger generation because we've learned that they connect really, really well and they can learn from each other. I've seen so much, just so many people learn how to knit, so many people learn about World War II. It was just, it's so awesome having those connections because it's just so sweet to see them like, oh, I've, I've never learned this before. This is so cool. They don't teach us this in school. They don't teach us. It's so good that they can learn it there. And that's also a place where we keep all of our wishes. It's kind of more of a warehouse and it's fully handicap accessible. We want, we wanted to make sure that that was an option for when we got it. So it's just such a beautiful place. Now, is it filled with volunteers who come and work in the, in, in the, in, in do you call it a community center? What do you call it? I just call it a community center. Okay. And so you have volunteers that come and, and work there, or you have people, residents from the nursing homes locally come and share their skills and share their stories with whomever visits the community center. Is that how it works? It's very open. My understanding is it's just very flexible and open and welcoming and anyone can come in and benefit from mm -hmm. From that okay so let's also talk about how the, what are these pop-ups I've been seeing this I follow you on uh, Facebook what are the pop-ups tell me about those so pop-ups are kind of a clubs in different areas across the United States they're not a area they're not like a permanent they're not permanent they're four or five weeks and those four or five weeks, you set up an Amazon wish list so people can go on and they can be like, I want to buy watermelon for this nursing home. And I want to buy pillows for every single resident for this nursing home. And then the pop-up kid who does a pop-up in their area will pick up all of that stuff and they will drop it off at the nursing home and they can take cute photos, videos, just, hey guys, you know, I did this today and I feel great. I feel amazing. And they're just really simple, not permanent, but little areas where you can help your community in four or five weeks. One of the things that I learned from your mom when I was there with you a couple of years ago is people were wanting to know, how can we help? And it was you're trying to figure out how do we grow? Do we add chapters? Do we, and you're figuring out how hard it is just to run your own organization <laughs> right there in Arkansas. So this was, sounds like a solution to grow throughout the country, keep it simple. Like you said, it's a temporary, it's a four to five week campaign. Kids get to get involved, their parents can help them. And it's a way people here where I live could, could do what you're, what you're suggesting and have it benefit and you have a whole, uh, obviously, some kind of program that people can follow along because you've helped people do it in other parts of the country. So no one's reinventing the wheel, I guess is what I'm saying. Yes, it's really easy. Anyone can do it. It's just four or five weeks. And that's just, it's, a, it's the perfect time. It's the perfect amount of time that almost anyone can have to help their community. Well, I'm going to try and get one going here. and. and in our community. My son from and grown graduated college off in his job, or I would uh, recruit him to do it, but I certainly can find some kids here who'd be, who'd be willing to help. So we'll work on that behind the scenes. We'll get back to that. And then let's talk about the award that you recently received. Um, you and I, your mom and I were in touch actually that, that week that you received it. It's called the Diana Award. Tell me about it. So the Diana Award is the most prestigious award a youth leader can get, I believe. I hope I'm right on that. You are. I have you are. The, paper, <laughs> the paper printout right here. Yes. It just says my name and that I've been awarded the Diana Award. So when I first got, when I first received, like when I first got the email that was like, hey, you're in you're in. I was like, oh my gosh. 
So the Diana that? Award is named for Princess Diana. It's supported by both of her sons. It's endorsed by them because I'm sure there are some things that are that use her name that aren't, but this is. Um, I believe that Harry gave a talk on the day that you all received your award and you were nominated for it. So somebody in this country, in this world, thought Ruby Kate should receive this award. How, do you, how does that make you feel? That just makes me feel so awesome. Like, it's not even awesome. It's like so beyond awesome. It's like, oh my gosh, just whoever, whoever was like, hey, you should win. Oh my gosh, thank you. Thank you so much. You don't, oh my gosh, I'm so thankful. You. you don't know who nominated you. I don't know. And I just, I just hope you feel like a legend. I hope everyone feels like a legend. Thank you. Well, I think it's amazing the work that you're doing. And it will, it, this is just the beginning of your life. And I commend your parents because for someone to achieve the things you've achieved, you have guidance, you have support, you have someone who has big dreams for you and the rest of your siblings. And it is not, it is not easy to do the work your mom and dad do in the world and help you do the world work you do in the world and and do it with such grace and dignity and you've kept your head about you um, you're not the least bit arrogant you're completely humble you're doing it for the citizens of your community and throughout the country and i just commend you i commend you it will follow you the rest of your life the work you do in the world has started now and you will you will do great things for decades to come. Do you know that about yourself? I, I feel like I do. And I, it's just so great to hear that from another person. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're so welcome. Well, let's take a break and let's come back and talk with your mom. It's a little bit of the difficult part of this conversation in that COVID-19 has affected the nursing home residents that you've tried to help these last few years and we're gonna find out how they're doing. We're gonna find out the impact you've had, continue to have through this struggle that the entire country has faced, entire world. And uh, your mom can add some insight for us. We're gonna bring her into the show and come back with both of you. We're talking with Ruby Kate. You can find out all about the work uh, of Three Wishes for Ruby's Residents. You can follow her on Facebook and uh, look at their website and we're gonna work on getting a pop-up in this community but if you're watching from somewhere else in the country you can reach out and figure out how your children can do a pop-up wherever you live we'll be back in just a moment we've been spending time with ruby kate of three wishes for ruby's residents and now we're joining uh her mom is joining the show amanda chitsey she's a nurse practitioner and ruby has spent much of her life going to work with her mom that's how this all started when you had a, a big heart for the residents who needed more who had some wishes that could be fulfilled and that's what you've been doing for the last couple of years uh, and welcome to the show amanda i i, I think yeah. you were off camera and heard the praise I send to you and your husband for all of the work that you put into your children and their philanthropy and all the work you all are doing in the world. Thank you. It, um, it makes us happy too, just to be a, a, a part of her journey. It's, it's uh, food for the soul. So it's, it's great for us. Now you have worked in nursing homes for how long? A quarter, tw over 25 years. And when Ruby would come to work with you, she started bonding with some of them and mm -hmm. finding out that they had some needs that could be met. And in her child mind, she thought, well, why can't they have these things? We could start a fundraiser. We could figure out how to do this. And um, mm -hmm. nearly half a million dollars later, and to the, all the growth that Ruby shared in our last segment, let's talk a bit about COVID-19, the impact it had on these residents and your work. Mm -hmm and where they're at now and, and what you see happening over the next month. Okay, you know, I think it was, um, the timing was perfect. You know, Ruby, to have a child come in a nursing home, they absolutely see the world differently. And whereas a, as an adult, as a healthcare provider, I see high blood pressure, I see pain, I see rashes. You know, that's what they're, that's where my eyes are. And 
her eyes were more on chocolate and, and that, wow, your pants don't fit. And why are you using the phone at the nurse's station to have these horrible conversations? So um, her vision was perfect because we started the nonprofit. And then about a year into that, COVID hit. And we realized that the nursing home residents needed us at that moment more than ever. I mean, more, more than I think nursing home residents needed anyone in the history of America. It was terrible. Nursing homes have never been shut down. Um, and they were shut down and they were shut down for over a year. We had residents that did not see family for a year. Um, it was horrible. And uh, my residents don't cry. You know, some of them, they lived through a depression era. You know, they starved, they've lost children, they don't cry but they cried during COVID. And so we started to link with essential staff to, to meet the needs that Ruby had identified before to make sure they still got their chocolate, to make sure we still um, had Happy Meals coming in there all the time and Sonic slushies and socks. And so uh, we actually stepped up more than ever during COVID by using essential staff. And I think that was key because they didn't care what their blood pressure was at that point. They just wanted to know that someone out there in that world still loved them. So we brought in iPads. We did everything we could to connect them to that world again. And, and I think we did a really, really good job. Um, and I think it made a big difference in their lives. And I, I remember during the t that time you did a call out saying, if anyone wants to sponsor a resident, I ended up sponsoring mm -hmm. one of the residents where you yes, were. And, and just sending simple things, um, movies that he might like and chocolates and coloring books because he liked adult coloring just simple things that we can do from where we are it was not hard for me to to place that order and have it sent and it arrived to him but i know it, it made a difference and i know there are other people who were doing the same yes. you talked about we just have literally a couple of minutes mm -hmm. the the nursing homes have opened up again and mm -hmm. now you're seeing a, tr a spike in cases, so things might shut down uh, again right. for, for a while to, to get that under control. And so when you, when in talking with our audience today, the need for this continues. COVID Absolutely. is over for, for many people, including the nursing home residents you're, you're talking about. Right. We hoped it was over, but we are starting to see cases again. And and I think we learned a lot from 2020. So maybe the restrictions won't be as much because we certainly saw as healthcare providers the mental effect that had on residents and it was terrible and it was long lasting. So maybe our, our legislators will see, you know, maybe, we'll, maybe we can do this differently this time and then not so strict. So I don't know, but we're certainly seeing a surge in cases. Um, and so I anticipate that there will be some some other some type of lockdown and restrictions in the future to help combat that. We're just seeing too many cases um, in the last two weeks. And when you when when people are, are hearing this and feel dismay and feel like what can I do? It is about finding your local nursing home, finding out um, maybe sponsoring someone, have a pen pal. Uh, have your children or grandchildren create a pop-up, but where is the place that people can go to get more information about Three Wishes for Ruby's residents? Ruby, where would you direct people to go right now if they wanted to help? I feel like I would definitely send people to our website because it's it has everything. It has everything that we've ever done. It has volunteer slips. It has everything about our community center and just everything you need to know. Yeah, it's www.3wishes.global and it can tell you how you can make an impact in your community. I think people need to remember there's 1.4 million nursing home seniors and there's so many ways you can help them and we would love to show you how to do that. Well, thank you both for being on the show. Congratulations mm -hmm. on all you've achieved mm -hmm. and you are welcome here anytime to share all your good news. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank you, thank you for having us. Take care. Bye.